First Nations TV, your news first. I thank Territorians for their extraordinary response throughout the top end yesterday. I know the lockdown came as a shock. I know we didn't give you much notice. There was a good reason for that. Given the risk, we could not afford to wait hours before acting. You did an incredible job. Staying home, masking up, getting on with it. Thank you. We have spent this morning reviewing all the information that has come in overnight. Based on that information, which I will explain shortly, we have made the decision that we need to extend the lockdown for a further 72 hours. That means for the Darwin Palms and Darwin rural areas, the lockdown has been extended to 1 p.m. on Friday. I am really sorry about this, but as I will explain, it is absolutely necessary. The reality is we are not out of the woods yet, not by a long way. The risk to the community has grown in the past 24 hours. We are now in an extremely critical period. We must stay locked down while we keep this virus trapped. Since the last update yesterday, we have confirmed one new positive case of COVID-19 in the Territory. It is just one case, that's the good news. What greatly concerns us is the potential for exposure to others. I will get to that shortly. This is the seventh case from the Tanami outbreak. The case was detected at the Centre for National Resilience overnight. It's a Darwin man in his 50s who left the mine site on Friday the 25th. He is a close contact of an earlier case the local positive case we gave details of yesterday. He was contacted by authorities on the 26th and transferred to House Springs that night. He was in the Darwin community while infectious for about 36 hours. His time in the community included an extended period of close contact with seven friends, mainly at a private residence in Rapper Creek. Those seven people are now being transferred to House Springs for isolation and testing and are considered high risk contacts. I will now go through this individual's movements. And this is very, very important. For the first time, we do have public exposure sites in the Northern Territory. These will be released through the official channels soon and we'll keep updating them throughout today if we need to, but I'll read through them now. There are three tiers for exposure sites. Close contact sites, casual contact sites, low risk sites. There is one public close contact exposure site. This makes it a high risk location. This is the Buff Club on the Stuart Highway, Darwin. Anyone who was at the Buff Club on Friday night, the 25th of June, between 5.30 p.m. and 8 p.m. is now required to isolate at their home for the next 14 days and get tested. Everyone in your household is also required to isolate for 14 days. Let me repeat that. If you are a close contact from the Buff Club site, or if you're in the household of a close contact, you are under a stay at home order for the next 14 days. That's absolutely 14 days at home. If your home is not suitable for isolation for that 14 days, you'll be transferred to the Centre for National Resilience for your isolation period. We're now doing the work with the Buff Club to contact everyone who was there using the Territory check-in app, plus the club's own attendance membership records to make sure everyone is aware of their obligations and to arrange for their testing. Once we have firm idea of numbers, we will report them to you. But right now, we believe there will be as many as 150 close contacts from this site. And I really want to confirm the 14 days. You stay at home for 14 days. The five reasons for leaving your house are not available to you you must stay in your residence for 14 days. Now to the second tier sites, the casual contact exposure sites. There are two. The first casual contact site is the BWS store on the Pratt Road in Pratt. The relevant period is Friday the 25th of June between 4 p.m. and 4.10 p.m. The man did not leave his car. If you're on site during the period, you're required to immediately isolate and get tested and stay isolated until you return a negative test. The second casual contact site is the Bunning store on Bagot Road. The relevant period is Saturday the 26th of June between 10 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Again, if you're on site during this period, you're required to immediately isolate and get tested and stay isolated until you return a negative test. 
Finally, there is one low risk exposure site. That is the Darwin Airport. This related to the positive case that was detected in Queensland yesterday who came from the mine. She arrived on the charter flight Friday 25th. Unlike the other positive cases, she did spend an extended period of time inside the airport, but she stayed inside the airport. She did not go into the community. Her viral load was considered low during this time and she wore a mask while in the airport as required. She was in the airport between 1.30 p.m. and 3.35 p.m. on Friday the 25th. She spent time in the arrivals hall, the check-in area, and upstairs in the departure area. She purchased some items at the news agency and at the Dome Cafe. The staff who were there during that period are being isolated and tested. She used two bathrooms in the airport and the cleaners are also being contacted and advised to monitor for symptoms. For everybody else who was in the airport during this period, the airport is not considered to be of risk. You are advised to monitor for symptoms and to isolate and get tested if you develop symptoms. Obviously, the normal lockdown rules apply to you, so you should be at home anyway, apart from the five reasons. We will also review the CCTV footage from the airport to see if there was any other activity during this period that could be considered high risk. Remember, everyone at the airport is wearing masks, thankfully, so the risk of spread there is low. Yesterday, I talked about 244 people who had left the mine during the infectious period and stayed in the territory. We've revised that number up to 259 to account for the people who left the mine by road. They are all isolating, either at Howard Springs, the Todd facility in Alice Springs, or at other suitable locations, depending on their risk profile. I will now go through the testing information we have for these people. Of the 259, we have 199 results back. All are negative apart from the ones we have reported. The remaining results are pending. I will update you on these as soon as possible, hopefully by the end of the day. Right now, our biggest concern is not the test results of these people. It is the high risk exposure site and the close contacts of the new case. We now have a lot more work to do to assess and manage the risk from that site. That's why we need to extend the lockdown to stay on top of that. To help the community get tested, we set have a new testing hub at the Nepal Courts at Marara. The police commissioner can talk about that shortly. Before I pass to the deputy chief officer, I will just quickly run through a few other things. First, Territory Day. Territory Day and its events, including public and private fireworks, will be delayed across the Territory. We will not be celebrating Territory Day on the 1st of July, but we will celebrate it soon. I promise you, it's not cancelled, it is delayed. Once we are through this, we will name a new date and we will have one hell of a party as one Territory. I promise you. On other issues. I can advise that Larrakia Nation have upped their patrols, helping out First Nations people in the region who may not have a fixed address. As of last night, they have provided 300 masks to people and are reporting strong compliance. We are continuing to talk to remote communities and land councils, and I fully support measures that land councils are taking to help protect their communities. I want to make it crystal clear to people in our remote communities. The risk is not where you are. The risk is in the greater Darwin area. That's why we have lockdown. That's why we have stopped travel in and out of this area. It's not just to protect us, it is to protect you too. Right now, your community is the safest place for you. We have had some questions about Alice Springs and why Alice is not in lockdown. Basically, everybody who arrived in Alice Springs from the mine has been perfect. That's why Alice is not in lockdown. Does not mean it cannot change in the future, but so far, so good for Central Australia. Thank you to everyone in Central Australia. You are amazing. As you will be aware, last night we established lockdown hardship payments for affected businesses. These grants are now open. You can get all the info at businessrecovery.nt.gov.au. I know the Commissioner will talk more about this soon, but we're very pleased with the level of compliance with masks, so thank you for that. One final point. If you are concerned about your safety while you're in lockdown, if you're concerned about your accommodation, if you're concerned about your level of support, please contact that hotline on 1800 193 111. They will get you on to the right people. That's where we are at. 
I'll be briefing the Prime Minister and my National Cabinet colleagues on the Territory situation soon. I said yesterday that Northern Territory is facing its biggest threat since the beginning of this crisis. We are still under threat. We are in the middle of the storm. But we will come through it. I know we will. Everyone is doing what they need to be doing. Territorians are looking out for each other. It's going to take a little longer than we hoped. It's going to hurt us a little more than we hoped. But we will smash this thing. I know we will. Thank you. Uh, so we are clearly in a, a grave and difficult situation in the Territory now. Uh, we have seven cases. Um, and we have found it necessary to continue the lockdown. I'm sure people will understand the situation we're in. We now have exposure sites where potential numbers are considerable. Um, but there is, there is this good news. The cases that we have are either interstate or now in, in quarantine. <clears throat> so we're now concerned about those people they've been in contact with. And we are, as you can imagine, working extremely hard day and night to pursue those people and identify them and, and uh, take appropriate action. There are now two cases that have come from the mine in other jurisdictions. We're working very closely with those other jurisdictions to uh, support them with the information they need to manage that situation. Uh, and we now have uh, the remainder of uh, five in the Territory. The, the other si the situation more broadly across Australia, as you've been watching in New South Wales, this, this is the Delta variant we're dealing with, both in New South Wales and now in the Territory. It's highly infectious. It's, there is spread now to Western Australia from, the, from New South Wales, and also there were, were some cases in Victoria. So you can see um, this variant is challenging all of us. Everyone in Australia is being challenged by this variant. Uh, we in the Territory have prepared for many months now for this scenario, for this situation. We knew that we wouldn't be spared forever. Uh, that's why we've been working so hard on vaccination, on getting, and our, getting our plans in place. We're now in the midst of implementing those plans. <coughs> um, I just mentioned the territory controller uh, who is, has oversight of this uh, and his team and all of the public health teams that we have. Uh, as I said, we've practiced for this and now we're in the midst of it. Uh, it's the scenario that we've in, in some respects expected and um, I'm sure as the Chief Minister has said, we will get on top of it. <clears throat> but we're in a race. We're racing to catch up uh, with this virus. We're racing to catch up with those people who have been infected by it. Uh, if we're extremely fortunate, um, we won't have other cases, but that's really an unlikely scenario now. There will almost certainly be other cases. The Northern Territory is in a very real space at the moment. And as has just been mentioned, we've got significant plans in place to be able to deal with this. The lockdown area for the Greater Darwin um, environment has been in place now since 1pm yesterday. There are frustrations for some people. We cannot apologise if you live outside the bubble and you've been caught in the bubble. You need to make contact with us and we will facilitate arrangements for you. If there is a justifiable reason, we will discuss with the Chief Health Officer potential arrangements to get you home just outside the bubble. But this is all in place to trap the virus. Be very clear on that. It is to ensure the transfer of this virus is maintained simply to be able to occur only in the Greater Darwin area and not infiltrate other parts of the Northern Territory. That is critically important. The lockdown within the Greater Darwin area is therefore in place to minimise any likelihood of transfer we now know a 36 hour window of potential exposure. We are now doing a lot of work to backtrack for those people. Up to 150 at the Buff Club on Friday night. We now need to do the work with those people and indeed need them to understand the direction that is now being provided to them. The netball centre at Marara has been stood up again as the drive through testing facility that will enable high volume and for people to do it in absolute safety of their vehicles. So those people caught up in those close contacts are encouraged to attend that location today, if possible, to enable us to undertake the testing regime and understand your current results. But be very clear, you must stay home outside of that reason for the next 14 days. The super clinic at Palmerston is also a testing facility as is RDH and Western Diagnostic at Tiwi provide a private practice which is by appointment only. 
those areas will provide testing to enable anybody who does start feeling symptomatic to come forward and be tested. We're offering that service to you continually. The behaviour to date has been very good. We asked for common sense and as we understand a lot of people did surge towards the supermarkets, we also know there are a lot of tourists in town at the moment and many of those were the ones that surged yesterday. Uh, in a great twist of irony, uh, I know that there's been many images of bottle shops with long queues in the Northern Territory on a Sunday. The number of bottle shops that are open for trade is deeply minimised. It is not the normal business and uh, those bottle shops have reopened today for takeaway only. So we shouldn't see any further panic in that regard. Nor should we see any need for panic as it relates to supermarket supplies. Our supply chains remain open. The supermarkets, service stations, those things that are provided as essential remain. It is important to state though, there are a number of businesses that are probably stretching the definition of essential. I ask again for common sense. If you do not need your employees in the workplace in the Greater Darwin area under this lockdown, please facilitate arrangements for them to work from home. Don't call them in unless you are truly essential. The hotline will continue to operate. We encourage anybody who has any cause of frustration or concern to raise that. They will then provide advice onto the Emergency Operations Centre and if we can resolve the situation, we will. We ask yet again for understanding. This is all about trapping this virus to ensure that we can get out of this situation as soon as is reasonably possible. From 1pm tomorrow, we'll have a further 72 hours to focus on that to ensure that we have greater protections in place for the Northern Territory. We will have as much information as we reasonably can from the outcome of the tests, certainly as it relates to those at the Tanami, and hopefully with good compliance from those caught up in the close contacts of those who have been potentially exposed. It is important that the community assists us here. Overnight, across the Greater Darwin area, behaviour was nothing short of exceptional. We have had many, many people complying and where we haven't seen people complying, particularly in the wearing of masks there in a public place, we have provided masks for them and we've ensured adequate contact and education and awareness is maintained to ensure that people are doing the right thing. This can be a relatively short window if people are compliant. Uh, look, unfortunately, to a degree, as I say, there was a large cohort we understand were tourists uh, undoubtedly there's also Darwin population that required to go to the supermarket with some level of urgency. Uh, despite the messaging, uh, despite uh, being very clear about the fact you all didn't need to surge there, uh, some people just simply went into panic mode, whether that's driven by uh, social media pages and the like, I'm not so sure, but what I want to restate again. Your source of truth is your respected media outlets. It's the coronavirus.nt.gov.au website. It's the Secure NT website. The supermarkets are open. We ask only a single member from a household goes and undertakes the shopping. Buy only what you need. The supermarkets are not closing. The bottle shops are not closing. So just be patient, be calm. You will find all that you need will continue to be provided and supplied. There is no risk to that. Certainly for the first 24 hours, we wanted to move into a high focus on education. I can also advise that I've asked the team to get out and about and start doing traffic apprehensions as well as engagement with people they see in the public to ensure that they're complying with what the exemptions are. Uh, I observed myself just travelling in here today that there was probably a lot more traffic on the road than I would have thought was appropriate and as a result of that I have a suspicion that some people are probably uh, gilding the lily a bit in respects of the exemption. Again, this comes down to the community. You all play a critical part of ensuring your own safety, but the safety of the rest of our community. So please be respectful of that. Nothing. So the unfortunate reality is that for people who live in those rural areas that are outside the declared local government areas, so that Marakai and the like, your most appropriate pathway to go shopping is to head south. So to Adelaide River, Pine Creek, if you have to go that far, but even if you necessarily have to go to Catherine. If you enter the bubble that is created by this lockdown, then it is very clear you cannot leave, you cannot go back. The last thing we would like to see is a transfer from a resident who lives just on the edge of that bubble, who ultimately becomes infected without their own awareness, then heads out and lives their normal life uh, unrestrained by the lockdown and becomes a positive case and transfers that. Then we'll be chasing our tails. That's not an environment we want. So understand the inconvenience, 
the hotline is there established specifically for those people so we can try and work through it but please many of them will have relations and relationships with people within the greater darwin area if it is such a necessity for you to come into the darwin area make the plan to be here until the conclusion of the lockdown what we also have to point out is nobody should be subjected to family and domestic violence over this period of time if you are finding yourself in that environment please leave the situation you're in contact authorities and we will come and support you we will remove you from that situation there is nothing within this COVID direction that will hold you to a place of violence. So please hear me when I say that, we're here to help you. More broadly to the Northern Territory population, thank you for the continuing support that you're providing across the rest of the Northern Territory and ensuring that the Northern Territory maintains safe. To the people within the Greater Darwin area, I say thank you. Please be patient. All of this is done in the best interest of you, your family and your loved ones. And if we stick together, and stay calm and compliant, we will get out of this sooner rather than later. Thank you. First Nations TV, your news first.